I welcome all of you for my presentation on Soxalate Extraction. Myself, Dr. G.B. Tiwari, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Chemistry, J.M. Patel College, Bhandara. Now let us see the introduction of Soxalate Extraction. The Soxalate Extractor was designed in 1879 by Franz von Soxalate. Soxalate Extraction, it is also known as Hot Continuous Extraction Process. And the main advantage of this method is the minimum amount of solvent is required for the extraction process. Soxalate extraction has been widely used for extracting some valuable bioactive compounds from various natural sources. The plant materials like leaves, roots, stems, barks, flowers, fruits, seeds, peels, or whole plant can be used for the process of extraction. This is the Soxalate Extractor Setup. The Soxalate Extractor Setup consists of the following parts. At the bottom you can see the round bottom flask containing the solvent as well as some glass beads are also placed in this solvent so as to avoid the bumping of the solvents during the process of heating. Number two is the siphon tube. Number three is this distillation path. Four one, number four is the expansion adapter. Fifth one is the condenser. This number six is the cooling water inlet. Number seven is the water outlet at the bottom you can see here the heat source is there and it can be a uh, heating mantle which is used to heat the solvent this number nine you can see here it is the thimble which is of uh, various size and the size of this thimble it depends upon the size of this soxlate extraction chamber the thimble can be made of filter paper by selecting the filter paper of appropriate size then uh, folding the filter paper and uh, stapling it at the bottom and in the thimble the sample is uh, introduced means the dried powdered material is uh, introduced in this sample uh, in this thimble and this thimble is placed in this uh, soxlate extraction chamber then the entire assembly is connected in this way and uh, you can see here at the joints the grease or uh, petroleum jelly is to be applied so that during the process of heating these joints they do not uh, stuck into each other. The soxlate extraction procedure it involves the following steps. Number one is the selection and collection of plant materials. The selection of plant material is very important for efficient phytoconstituent isolation. Disease free and healthy plants should be selected for the extraction process. After that, uh, drying of plant material is the next step. The drying process is important for the extraction of plant materials. The plant material or the entire plant should be air dried under the shade in the dark room uh, because overheat can cause the loss of volatile substances or may also result in some of the light sensitive constituents from plant materials being lost out. Num next one is the grinding and size reduction. This is the third step. The grinding and size reduction is essential for soxlate extraction because smaller the particle size, greater will be the surface area of the powdered particles. Large surface area, it improves the contact of the powdered particles with solvent which is used for the extraction and hence efficient extraction process will take place. Also uniform powdered particle size provides the maximum extraction as the solvent can pass uniformly through the powdered particles packed in the thimble. The very fine powder and very coarse powder they should be avoided because they are not suitable for effective 
extraction the very fine powder may produce the beds during the extraction and very coarse powder delay the extraction process then next one next step is the selection of solvent uh, for soxalate extraction process the selection of solvent for soxalate uh, extraction process it is based on the phyto constituent isolation process solvent should be easy to remove they should be inert normally the selection is based on increasing polarity order like the order of acetone petroleum ether ethyl acetate chloroform methanol ethanol and water in this uh, sequence it should be selected the petroleum ether is commonly used for the extraction of the steroids and fixed oils and also uh, petroleum ether is employed for the removal of chloroform uh, chlorophyll uh, from the leaf powder uh, after that uh, the fifth step is the post extraction process after the completion of the extraction process by using the soxalate the extracted materials are uh, concentrated under vacuum or reduced pressure to evaporate the solvent after removal of the solvent the extract can be dried collected and covered with aluminum foil and stored in the refrigerator or the dried extract can also be subjected to further isolation process by using various uh, separation technique like uh, column chromatography to obtain the product in the pure form then let us see the working of this uh, soxalate extractor the setup is in this way the entire setup is supported with the help of stands and clamps you can see here <coughs> A small amount of uh, dried sample is taken in the thimble which is placed inside the soxlate chamber and this soxlate uh, extraction chamber is uh, connected to this uh, round bottom flask uh, and this round bottom flask uh, contains the solvent uh, and on the upper side the solvent extraction chamber it is connected to the condenser and uh, these two uh, inlet as well as uh, outlet uh, points they are further connected to the pipe the round bottom flask uh, is heated using the heating mantle upon heating the solvent in the round bottom flask they will begin to evaporate upon reaching the boiling point and these vapors they move through this vapor tube upwards and they go up to this uh, condenser where they get cooled and the conden uh, and they condense back into the reservoir containing the thimble the process of heating is continued more and more vapors they rise upwards up to the condenser and on reaching the condenser these vapors they get cooled and they condense back in the reservoir which uh, contains the thimble and slowly the level of the solvent in the reservoir it goes it rises it goes upwards and upon reaching this uh, siphon top it is also known as the overflow level the solvent the entire solvent it pours back into the distillation flask and this uh, uh, this solvent extraction chamber now is free from the solvent and again the cycle begins heating is continued more and more vapors they go upwards through this vapor tube up to this condenser they again condense back and again the uh, condensate it gets accumulated in this solvent extraction chamber and again this uh, level of the solvent it reaches uh, up to this uh, siphon top and again the same thing once it reaches up to the siphon top the solvent again pour back uh, pours back into the distillation flask and the cycle begins uh, again and again the cycle continues 
the cycle will uh, continue uh, till you get the either the colorless uh, solvent which is flowing uh, through the siphon tube then you can stop uh, this uh, extraction process or after the completion of the extraction uh, you can stop this process this solution carries the extracted solute whatever the solution it is coming out of the siphon tube it will carry along with it uh, the extracted solute into the bulk liquid the solute remains behind in this distillation flask and upon heating only the solvent further passes back to the bed of the sample the process is repeated until the extraction is complete and during this extraction process it is not advised to leave the equipment completely alone due to the mix of running water and uh, elect, uh, uh, electrical appliance assembly uh, this oxalate apparatus is used for the extraction of bioactive compounds from the natural sources example plants what we are doing we are taking the uh, either the leaves or stem or bark or other aerial parts or roots of the plants and we are drying it and then we are making the powder by using the mortar and pestle and then that powder is filled in this thimble care should be taken that this powder should not be very much fine otherwise it will stuck the siphon tube and then this powdered material is wrapped and then placed in this thimble and then we are connecting this condenser over this We are connecting this condenser over this extraction assembly, soxlate extraction assembly. Here grease should be applied at this uh, at these joints so that these joints they don't stuck to each other. This is the solvent inlet and with the help of funnel we are introducing the solvent in this flask through this soxlate extraction chamber. Then we are <coughs> opening the tap. So what we, this is the inlet for the cold water and this upper uh, outlet for the hot water. Then after adding the solvent in this RB flask with the help of this funnel through this uh, solvent uh, through this uh, soxlate extraction assembly what we are doing we are <coughs> just uh, starting this uh, heating mantle then as soon as we are started heating this mantle the temperature in this rb flask it increases the solvents gets heated and it starts boiling it then goes upward through this vapor tube up to this condenser where that solvent gets cooled and after cooling the solvent again comes back in this solvent uh, in this soxalate extraction assembly where it uh, comes in contact with this thimble and what happens now is that the solvent now 
it uh, dissolves the bioactive compounds which is present in this uh, uh, um, powdered sample and as the heating is continued the level of the solvent in this sol uh, soxalate extraction assembly it increases and once it reaches this overflow level of the siphon tube then suddenly this gets unloaded the solvent gets unloaded into this rv flask through this siphon tube and the cycle again continues thank you uh, this is all about the extraction of the bioactive compounds present in the dried plant product using the soxalate extraction assembly thank you we are thankful to the department of biotechnology ministry of science and technology government of india for awarding the star, uh, dbt star college scheme we are also thankful to the principal jm patel arts commerce and science college bandara for providing necessary infrastructure and facilities. Thank you.